is going on, everybody? Jumbo Thick here. We are back, finally, with some more Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, 4th edition. This is the Expedition of the Damned. I, of course, am your GM, your DM for the night, Jumbo Thick. We have almost the full cast and of the crew. Uh, one of us will not be joining for probably at least a couple sessions um, uh, on account of some personal matters. And, uh, yeah, so... Mr. Mr. Luthor will be um, sequestered away, and we'll see what happens with that. Does he have to come up for the sure. guy? Yeah, perhaps that, indeed. Um, just to get us back into the swing of it, because it's been a little while for all of us actually playing. Uh, let's do introductions, and let's start off with uh, Pierce Galactic. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, it has been a little while. So like we just did this last fall too. Um, it's your favorite handgunner, um, the, the the man from Austin, smartest, handsomest, uh, most most suave man in the group. Mm -hmm. um, I do tend to do better talking to other people than anybody else. At least I don't know mm -hmm. why. Mm -hmm. um, I have no idea what they're doing. I think we're going to go on an expedition. I think we're going to cross the desert. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. But nice. I got some. Uh, I got some little uh, some little riflemen with me. So uh, let's see if I can get them. Uh, Get him there alive. Uh, let's slide on down to the Doob. Doob 209! Uh. Hello! I play Henry Bertold. <laughs> a 17 year old knight now, that's what we're going with. Yes. Six foot one, about you know 200 pounds of solid muscle. Mm. Maybe 220. Uh, white hair, blue eyes, and I am a first knight. First knight indeed. Uh, let's slide on over to Lucien. Hey everybody, Nate here, playing Lucien Levesque, a human duelist, uh, probably 19 year old now, uh, 5'7", shoulder length, dark mm. hair, mm. wielding rapier, pistol, and sometimes sword breaker, sometimes repeating crossbow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to recap of last session, which I sadly missed. And, uh, <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so, don't right. worry, you'll get it. Desert Voyage. And last but not least, the Dan Decker. Hey, well, everyone, this is Dan Decker here. Wait, not for wherever he is. Um, 10 foot ogre, 33 years old, probably 34 now. He doesn't keep up much with that. <clears throat> and he's got himself a halfling, sits on his shoulder. Rory the Rumster. Right, and um, we'll be missing Mr. Luthor here for a little while. Uh, tend to tend to follow Mr. Luthor along, but um, you know, we'll get you taken care of, all right. Indeed, we will see. So, to bring everyone up to speed, last we left off, the crew of the expedition has finally begun their trek. Uh, towards Sudenberg, which has been revealed as your um, current destination of choice. With the options of leaving Le Chic, you ultimately decided on a overland trek, um, possibly safer. Uh, we'll see. However, due to the greenskin wa that you had shattered, the land, the more safer route to the north was somewhat chock full of random orc warbands and whatnot um, trying to uh, establish dominance over one another. Seeking to avoid that, the only other options you were left with were crossing over the Atlan Mountains or moving south to the Cobra Pass, which would ultimately shuttle you out into the desert proper the Grand Desert. Um, all of you guys should have a map. If you don't, I can send it to you again of, uh, of Araby. And previously, you had ultimately decided on taking the Cobra Pass, it being the most um, reliable and easily traversed method with your caravan without losing any of your resources, which you crewed quite a few resources. You've um, attained more uh, 
more bodies and more um, just resources in general than when you actually started the expedition, uh, despite the kind of disastrous uh, in, uh, ships that uh, may have had some issues. Ultimately, you crossed over the uh, river of the Serpent, landed you in the what is known as the Land of Assassins. It's, it's a stretch of, of sea desert area between the Eunuch Mountains and Lashik. The Cobra Pass being in between there. It is also the territory of some of the local Arabian tribesmen that you've encountered before. Um, known as the D... I can't pronounce the name. D... Uh, Dahib? Dahib? I'm going with Dahib. Luckily, you did not cross any of them. And upon making your way to the Cobra Pass, you stopped to make camp and were um, delighted with the uh, event of a wandering carnival that stopped by in the middle of the night. All of you, um, well, not all of you, most of you visited said uh, the said carnival. Uh, it was known as the Cabinet of Curiosities, which had many strange wonders and bizarre creatures and things from across the world that you were able to gaze upon, um, try sample some fine food, which also did raise morale for the uh, local individuals in your regular mil militia and troops. And there appeared to be no adverse effects as everyone was terrified that their soul would be gobbled up by Slanesh or something. But after visiting the cabinet, you made your way into the pass. It was at this point, um, leaving mostly the regular militiamen on watch, it was reported after a few nights that there was a bit of a, not necessarily an uproar, but there was a bit of a superstition going around camp as there was tales of screams happening in the middle of the night, keeping the guards um, in a very heightened state. Uh, a lot of them not getting sleep and succumbing to uh, a, a very morose um, form of fear and terror seeping into the, the average ranks. You all decided to investigate said screams, staying up one night when Henry was uh, mostly the one leading this task, and he was approached, or more so, more so summoned, by Commander Helwig before the night um, fully transpired, peeling him away as the night's uh, notified all of you that you were to disband this search, that they had it under control, that you you should return to your normal duties and get rest for the next day. Um, the rest of you, led by Sir Luther, decided to not abide those commands, while Henry had a meeting with the commander himself. Henry's meeting went strangely and possibly a little threateningly, and Henry found, uh, well, I'll let him make his own decisions on what he suspects um, is going on with the commander and his knights. While the rest of you investigated some of the screams, you found a bloody trail out into the mountains, which led you into what looked like a, one might only describe it as a, uh, blasphemous, almost heretical site of some foul ritual that had taken in place. Vast amounts of blood and gore steeped in almost like a pit-like area. Upon investigation, it was revealed that um, you had, at least the viscera and blood had attracted some of the local wildlife, and you all were about to be assaulted by a large assortment of um, sand scorpions these scorpions being about the size of the average man, much larger than your your normal um, your normal insect. However, 
with a mighty nog bellowing, scaring them away. Uh, a disaster was ultimately avoided. And before you escaped from the apparent almost trap, um, I believe it was Wolfram, you snagged the dirty dirty cloth. I think it was Wolfram. I'm almost positive. It was. It was. Yeah. You snagged the, the tattered, dirty cloth that you found soaked in blood. Um, you were unable to clean it by normal means and were um, had to rely on magical means to unsully the, the, the garment the next day, revealing that it was none other than a tattered like remnant of a Knight's Panther's tabard, leading you all to draw some conclusions upon the next day. And that is, in fact, where we will be picking up. So, you guys are about three days into the pass. You have another... If you had to guess, you'd probably have another three or four days marching. Well, not really marching. You're, you're kind of just moving along as, as, as best as you can. Most of you on horses, most of you not. Um, but three or four days to make it through the pass and then to the Grand Desert. But after the night's event have unfolded to set the scene, all of you can can gather as you please. Um, Mr. Luther is called away. Ah, damn those plot devices. He's been called away to a meeting of the higher heads of the expedition. And he is currently unavailable as they are making their normal plans for um, the near future. So the rest of you are free to uh, do your devices as you need be. And yeah, that's where I'm picking up. If you don't want to discuss anything, we can move on to the travel. That's up to you, though. How how much of this was I present for, if any? You... How much would I, would I be assumed to be aware of? So you weren't present on the actual trek out? Uh -huh. I don't believe you were. I think you stayed behind with your second okay. uh, because you were not here physically. <laughs> so, sure. Sure. so I'm assuming they're letting you know what is what's going what what's going on. Probably Wolfram and, and Henry. Um, I do believe okay. that Luther was the one that unsullied the brag. I think it was him. Pretty sure it was him. He cleansed it, and um, immediately as he cleansed it, he was being pulled away. So you guys can. Have at it as you will. Oh, Lucien, you also, I forgot to mention, the expedition took in a new um, liaison. Wait. There was a peddler that you guys had saved from a green skin a war band. Uh, a bunch of war guy. boys. Uh, I, believe, I, believe, yes. I believe that was me and my second who... Yes, it was. But he's, he's officially joined the caravan. Nice. Um, he wants to make his way to Sudenberg. And he's bringing all his knickknacks and baubles with him. And he gifted the expedition with some dragon cannons. Uh, that spew... Oh, yeah. That's right. Fire. That's right. That's necessary. It's a, it's a full weapons assortment. What was his name? Emesis Cannon. Feng Shi. Nice. But, um, was, was he the guy who gave me my... Uh... What should we call it? Special headache medicine? He did. Okay. I just want to remember that. He has lots of interesting remedies. He He's a valuable resource to the expedition. For now. So, if you guys want to talk, you can. If not, we can move on with the day's events. I'm going to go up to Lucy and I'm just going to tell him about the adventure with the... Uh... The pit of blood and bones and the, the scorpions and how I, I how I Wolfram found that tattered uh, tabard of the knights. And uh, although Luther did uh, cleanse it for us, he, like the coward he is, he ran off immediately afterwards. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. Perhaps you should talk to Henry. He doesn't like me very much, but I, I do feel like this needs to be a conversation. I think he's jealous of my good looks. Is this, is this the following day or is it still the same night? This is the following day. So you oh. guys have all rested. It, 
Luther said that he needed to, to rest before undergoing the uh, the cleansing of the uh, garment. So this would be the next morning. Well, what problems did you find anything on your adventure last night? Were you... Didn't we already talk about this? No, I got pulled away. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he was. Uh, that's he was, right. He was being threatened slash interviewed by the knights. That's captain, right. I'm sorry. It's uh, been the a few commander months. the whole time. I don't know if it's <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna go over to him and I'm gonna come around. I'm like, listen, young lad, I've got something t- to tell you that you don't want to hear. Yeah, but lad. Well, I'm like six years old. I'm eight years older than him, so he's True. he's a wee True. wee boy to me. So mm-hmm. I come up to him and try to put my arm around him like this because he's mm-hmm. yes. taller than me, and I'll be like. I don't think you want to hear this, but I'll just uh, I'll just show it to you, and you you decide. And I'm gonna pull out the, the scrap of tabard and said, "I we found this bloodied, by this pit filled with blood and bones, while we were being attacked by foul giant scorpions. This looks like one of yours." Uh, have you told anyone else about this apart from Luther, Nog, Lucian? Did Luther clean it himself or did he consult somebody on how to clean it? I can't remember. I'm pretty sure he did it himself. He has the ability okay. to right. cleanse things. Uh, no, 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 no. Not a word. Good. Commander has been acting quite strange. Right. That man is an oaf all the time. This could be the naive of me, but I feel like he's possibly threatened by my presence. I don't fall in line with the rest of his new men. The, um, the increase in. Between you knights, your politics is just, it is, I don't know if it's too subtle or too complex, but I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my friend. I just don't understand it. I just know that I can trust our small group. I tell you this now because that night we fought the orcs out in the desert. Those skeleton riders were also wearing our colors. Were they now? We were... I was engaged with the uh, the boar riders, so I didn't even see that. That's well. There's something odd happening, especially when the other knights, as I say that word with disdain, are bowing down and kneeling to the commander in his tent. I know me and Lucian have shared conversations before about visions when we got close enough to him. You're not speaking of the knights of your order, right? You're just speaking of the other order. Well, I believe they've been indoctrinated as Knights Panther, but I don't see them as any. Something has been off ever since uh, we rescued him from the goblins. We have sensed it way back since we were in the Sheik. Did you find anything else in this pit of blood, or just this piece of clothing? Weapons, bodies, parts of bodies. Nog, did you see anything unusual? You, you do have a greater sense of smell than us. You, you're whispering, Nog. Can you speak up? Wasn't, wasn't, wasn't quite sure how to, how to speak up there. Um. I don't know. Uh, would I have smelled something? Probably. Um, I guess I could do a, a cute smell Copper test. Copper blood? Um, yeah. It was... It, you wouldn't really need much of a, a test, Nog. I definitely um, catch something. I got night was, vision, too. You were the one who led them to the place in particular, uh, up until yeah. you picked up the blood trail. It was, it was definitely human blood. Um, oh, it wasn't yeah. just regular stuff. And then there was also a whiff of a very tantalizing scent that has plagued you of recent 
Um, it reminded you of the smell of the pink demon that you discovered in a basement at one point. So I'll relay all that information. No, did you, uh, it was a little dark. I mean, I, I'm usually good at tracking, but still, could you happen to tell, uh, how all these bodies were dismembered? I, I can't remember if it was, uh, I don't appear anything looked like shot. I didn't, but I couldn't remember it looked like axes are bladed. I mean, those are pretty distinct. What I thought was almost just ripped apart. There wasn't much of a, a buttering, Mr. Wolfram. It's more of a, just a, a amalgamation of parts and blood. Too much blood, if you ask me, sir. Isn't that right, Mr. Nog? What, what, what blood? What ought to be, right? Indeed, indeed, sir. Almost like them, them peoples was, uh, was, was just full of blood. More so than usual. Or maybe there was more people than we could see. <laughs> oh, Rory. Too well, much blood. We know he doesn't want us out at night. It's investigating these disappearances. But people have been disappearing. I'm going to ask this because I cannot do it myself. And it's voluntarily. As I look to Lucien, you are possibly the quietest of the group. You can say no, but I do think at some point I ask you to go out at night, sneak around. You can take someone with you that you trust. But there is a, you know, a target on my back, so I can't do it myself. Otherwise, I would not ask any of you to do this. It's clear we cannot go on like this. I fear you are in too much danger if we continue to ignore what is clearly going on. I agree, I will um, I'll consider how to best uh, stealthily gain reconnaissance and uh, perhaps if we catch something suspicious we may uh, sort it out together and catch them, confront them? Or should you prefer we just uh, gather information for the time being? I got wants us to sort it out and take it head on, but I don't know the forces that are at play here. Isn't it always better to attack? and control the battlefield and to sit back and let it come to you and control you. <clears throat> You're right. Well, from the problem is, is that I know in terms of martial talents, I'm going to be outclassed by the captain. And if he is at work with the arch enemy or other beings, we may not be able to handle it ourselves either. I wish that there was still with us. I think we just need to be mentally prepared that if the situation does come down to it, we are ready to act. Because once we act, there's no going back from it. So uh, are we are we going to keep to keep on trekking today, Mr. Nog? I reckon, uh, I reckon that's what I ought to do. I feel like keep on pushing through, but I, I wouldn't be much for recon. I'm not, not too quiet. Oh, don't be too hard on yourself, Mister Nog. You're the quietest ogre I've ever met. <laughs> and a bit like yourself, you could get a pretty good look ahead, but I wouldn't want oh. you out there all on your own. Oh, I've got a knife, awfully good perch, I say. 
holds ready to truck on through with whoever. Missing Mr. Luthor. I think we're ready to go. Okay. Are we following in the line? Or are we making plans? Everyone is beginning to pack up and beginning to get their stuff together for the caravan to get moving today. Um, are you guys just going to go along with the current inner workings, or are you making some ulterior plans? I figured we are keeping status quo. Okay. Well, until... Wait, I... I mean, due to the fact that we have footmen, there will be a certain speed that the uh, caravan, the, the, the column will not be able to, to, to go above. Mm -hmm. But we are all horsed. So if we were to take a, um, a, a little ride and investigate, I don't think it would disrupt the column. The column and I think we'd be able to get back no problem, hopefully without any being missed. What are you trying okay, to do? If you want, uh, I would ride with a column to avoid any suspicions. What What are you trying to attempting to investigate, Wolfram? Well, I know that uh, what well, sounds to me that uh, Lucy and that, that Henry just asked Lucy to do a little um, mm -hmm. investigation away from the column to kind of figure out what's going on. I'm going to make sure that I'm available to support that if he chooses to do that, even though I can be stealthy until I shoot, and I'm mm -hmm. not stealthy, but. Yeah, just uh, that way, because if we just disappear, it's going to be, be pretty obvious. Nice. going to wonder what's going on. Yeah, I mean, it's Possibly. like, uh, yeah. Even so, we figured, it sounds like all is happening at night. So I figured we'd travel during the day. During the day, and then just kind of do your investigation at night. To, yeah, watch you leave the camp and then okay. investigate further. If all right. Well, in that case, activity takes place. Let's get moving. I need uh, one of you to roll me a, um, I think we're, we were doing survival. A survival roll, please. Hold on. I've just increased it. No. I, I'm probably not the best at that, so I'm going to sit I back. I think that was... Uh, it was Luther. Luther's uh, job. Let's, uh, let me... Let's survival? What would that I'm be? I'm in the uh, 20s, so... Uh, you can, it's yeah, this I'll intelligence you know, base. I'm, I think it's outdoor oh, survival. Outdoor survival? You yeah. know what maybe you want me doing I don't think that. I don't think Nog should be doing it. Yeah. What about Rory? I had help. <laughs> Roy's not super intelligent. I have a 26, you know, so, you know. None, none better, of us are really who's better at that. None of us are intelligent. Uh, well, Wolfram's actually better okay. than that, but still, what about uh, Shirley Lucian or Henry? Or I mean, I get I get a plus one just for having Rory. I'm at a 33. Uh, that's, uh, that makes me better the pack, than bro. Than that's leader of the pack, bro. That's probably Dude, hey, it's, it's all you, Lucian. Here stuff. goes Nog. Damn. It's all you, Lucian. All right. No, let's go, Lucian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a test roll, Nog, right? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, that didn't count. Oops. Oops. Stupid that's awful. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> hey, oh, that's how I roll. Don't do that. Don't roll like me. Uh, All really right. Did die of dysentery. <laughs> this is going to be for the next four days of travel. Oh, God. This is just what can possibly happen. Let me pull up my table. It's not always horrible. It's not. not yeah, it is. It's not always horrible. Um... It's always right. a monster. Go ahead and roll me a D100, please. Oh. 16. Okay. For some reason, um, starting this morning, it gets unbearably hot. Um, one might say the weather has turned. The wind stops even um, even moving almost at all. There are no clouds in the sky. It is nothing but open sun on the hot desert. And you feel like, especially within this uh, within this pass, this ravine that you guys are traveling through, has almost been turned into an oven 
uh, baking all of the expedition inside of it. As it is turned, you are um, suffering from a, uh, a heat wave, and you will be subject to the conditions of exposure. So, all of you will gain a fatigue condition at the start of each day, as long as the weather's this bad, just because that's what's happening. Do you mean by day four we're going to have four fatigue conditions? No, no, it just every okay. day. Like, it'll re- it resets every night, and then you will get, you, you're automatically getting one every day for traveling in this, in this climate. Um, if you go too long without water or food, thankfully you guys are very well supplied. You would be further making, you would actually be making rolls, and then it would, it would spiral pretty quick, normally. Um, but for now, everything is holding out. Where do we mark like fatigue stuff like that? So um, spot on my, or just keep up with it. Yeah, I think you just thing. need to just keep up right. with it. Just, oh, just there it is. I found a spot. Negative for it. ten. There it is right there. <laughs> yeah, it's just a minus ten to to everything. That's what a Frosty fatigue board. condition does. Yeah. So right now we're all at zero, but by the end of the day. Yeah. So each each day fatigue. you're gonna have uh, one fatigue, and until the weather cha- changes. Gotcha. All right. With that um, happening. Um, investigations into possible uh, spying maneuvers. So, at night, the the first night, we'll we'll have three or four nights here. How exactly are we going about this? Are we trying to keep eyes on them? Are we like sneaking into their camp? Because if you remember, they kind of camp separately from mm-hmm. the main caravan, just because they have a larger mostly horse-based for- force. So they kind of camp off to the side. Um, not not too far, but enough that there are two separate encampments. More of a war strategy than it is anything else. And, um, yeah. So watches are normally had within, the, within your encampment. You're assuming the same things happen out with the knights, as Henry can attest to. So how are we doing an investigation into the uh, Commander Helwig? So the uh, the only way we'd be able to see if it's is it a moon okay is it a moonless night or is the moon out? With the conditions being as horrible as they are, as you you are you, the weather has turned on you. That's literally what the uh, the table is. Um, I'm gonna say that visibility is minimal. Outside of just okay. fire, firelight. That's what I was asking. So unless they literally walk in front of the fire, we can see their silhouettes. Yeah, you're not going to be or able at to an see angle where we can easily. see a reflection of them. Only Nog would be able to see them. Yeah, Nog, and I will say, Nog's night eyes are not like he can't. It, it's not like perfect vision. It's still, it's a limited range. It's just better than a human. All right, I might. Have, I think I got a possible little pull here. We're we're in a desert. It is flat, mm-hmm. so now you are in a hoof prints make sound. So yes. if we're kind of oriented by that, and we hear hoof prints going away from their camp, we may be able to come to a conclusion that hey, someone's leaving on a horse. Yeah. Now currently, you guys are in a pass, like in between the mountain range. So you're in the mountainous oh, okay. area. It's just it's very arid and dry and. Uh, there is sand, just not. It's you're not in the full desert yet. How many days until we get to the open dunes? Uh, you had four days of investigation until you end up in the actual open dunes. It might not be worth it on these four nights. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Okay, just go on by but the I'm... the standby. I will say. Yeah. In Just terms put- of both perception tests as well as if we have to make any kind of stealth tests or... Yeah, go ahead and um, let's start off with a perception test from one of you. Um, I'll be uh, trying that's to perceive probably, and listen. That's probably Wolf. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's going to be Wolf room. The only other thing I'm good at. All right, as I say that, let's see what happens. Oh, 
That is a, a critical a, success. A critical save. Critical okay. success. Now, Wolfram, make me a stealth check. Okay. Mine's not as good. Let me double check. Alright. Oh, yeah, we've got the. I still made a critical save with the uh, the negative 10. But yes. let me check this here yes. myself. Alright. Good. Very good. Alright. Council 12. Please guide me. I passed that too. Even with the minus 10? Yeah, with uh, okay. two levels of success. Two levels of success. All right. Uh, for them. Okay. With your critical success, Wolfram, um, one of the nights you stay up, uh, you, you take like a, a first watch. Actually, with your critical, you'll be taking uh, like a second watch, like you and Lucian kind of tag out. Um, focusing your attention on the knights in particular and their comings and goings. First thing you notice is that on the first night, you do not hear the screams like you did before. Everything's eerily quiet. The next night, after another days of travel, you notice that at some point there is a, a gathering of about 10 or 12 knights on horses that begin to make a circle around the main caravan camp. They appear to be um, making patrols just around. On the third night, when you're about to... Like the next day, you'll be hitting the edge of the pass. You notice that as the group of knights begin their patrol, a secondary group moves out towards the outer reaches of the pass ahead in smaller number, about five or six horses. Are they trying to uh, be stealthy? Does it appear they're trying to be stealthy themselves? It appears... Maybe not draw attention. I know it's night, but still. They don't have the, the, the group that you spy, and you barely spy them. Uh, only You only see them because of your critical success. You notice figures without torchlight moving off into the darkness, which is highly unusual. Because even the patrol have... They have torches with them to so they can actually see where they're going. I guess I'm just gonna... Where are the rest of the... Where are the other guys? Are they um, headed Lucy, down? I mean... People... Everyone is having to take their turns sleeping. So you're, this is on your particular watch. Lucien would have already taken his and gone mm-hmm. and gone to rest. Nog is also at rest somewhere in the camp. Henry, I'm not sure if you... Do you stay with the caravan or do you usually sleep, sleep in the night's encampment? Ah, uh, the caravan. Uh... Well, I think we established it was the caravan because the encampment came to me yes. that night. So... So Henry and his smaller contingent of knights mostly stay with the caravan, acting as a, a quick uh, attack bodyguard if necessary. All right. Um, how far, like literally, like in in yards and meters? How far is uh, Lucian's tent from where I'm at? I'm not um, going after those guys. That's a death wish. A so I'm not hundred, going after them. A few hundred feet, probably, Wolfram. All right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pitter-patter over there as, as quietly and as swiftly as possible and I with your stealth check shake. you move pretty pretty quietly and you avoid lots of attention there are some other people up doing their own watches this is a very large um you have a, a large amount of people there's hundreds here of us. yeah, yeah. You, there's hundreds of people here so there are watches going on at various points campfires um at this point beginning to die down going into embers but and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm gonna. Um, sorry, Lucian. I'm gonna shake him awake, and, and I don't know. He gets groggy if he snaps right awake. But I, I apologize, Lucian. But I, 
I need to let you know. I, I was watching the nights tonight. Uh, last night they had a patrol around there. I don't know, maybe you saw it on your watch, but this night, they um, they did act different. They acted differently, and but a group of them, a small group, maybe five, maybe ten. It was they had no torches. I could not see a silhouette, but they left and went far ahead. And they just. I mean, you and I both know what happens when you ride a, a, a horse in the dark and you cannot see. You're going to break a horse's ankle. But they left us. This concerns me. I don't, I don't. What should we do on this? I don't want to follow them. Not alone. This group, it was uh, more than four. He was oh, ten. Oh, definitely, definitely more. Uh, from what it appears, it was. I was de- more than four. I don't believe more than ten, but it was within two hands. Wait here. Oh, wait, Henry. Okay. We may, I'm gonna kind of just keep an eye on the visions. camp. Then. Yeah. My my recommendation is that. Uh, we arm ourselves. We prepare. We hear That's any commotion. Idea. We stay ready to to move out. Right, thank you, thank you. I'm going to. Uh, you want me to? I will stay right here then. I will run and go, grab my gear, and I will meet you right back here. I'll give a nod and then move off towards. Uh, where I I guess I I would somewhat know where Henry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Keeps his lodgings. Mm-hmm. Um, just looking like I'm restless from sleep, wandering the encampment. You find Henry easily enough. His uh, his fellow knights. Um, and a matter of fact, you see that uh, uh, one of his one of his many squires is currently um it's kind of like groggly kind of like opened his eyes and sees you coming as it looks like he's fetching master henry's uh lord henry's armor and is currently polishing it um as you approach I, master master lucien um uh master henry is currently down for the night did Give you need something, something? And quite so. Would you be so kind as to rouse him? I, is, uh, this must be important, sir. Of, of course, I will. I will immediately. As uh, the younger man stands up and very hesitantly moves towards Henry's tent to uh, peek his head in. And he, he attempts to very, very hesitantly wake you up, Henry. I'm, I'm gonna. I will have followed to the the opening of the tent just to be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you? You must have found something. Yes, Wolfram has spotted a group mounted, more than four fears and ten, torchless, hiding out far in front of the caravan. Seems suspicious enough to either one prepare in case of commotion to investigate further, or two preempt, I doubt, confront. I figured I would consult you to see which we prefer. I get the chance to check it out. Let me grab some of my things. Quick question. Mm-hmm. What does the Bugmans do again? It removes all fatigue Fear. conditions. And it um, keeps Lucious. you from being frightened for a certain time period. Yeah, yeah, about eight hours. Nice. Just checking. I figure it might be a... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Might be something. My first wig. Uh, and at this point, um, I would probably go and rouse my second and mm-hmm. Nog 
and then I probably coordinate with Henry to meet quietly just mm-hmm. outside the encampment with the preparations to go okay. forward. Um, Lucien, do you wake uh, Johanna de Vries? Yeah. Okay. Um, as you as you move to to wake her, you peek your head in her tent, and um, you see her possibly skin a little exposed, Lucien. Oh. <laughs> and uh, as you kind of hesitantly kind of move to call out to her, in very quick fashion, there is a blade pointed towards your throat. Um, and then she realizes who is calling and quickly uh, pulls it away. This uh, better be important, eh, Lucien? It is. I'm yourself. Very well. And uh, she turns her back to you to uh, put her clothing on. And he gets armored up. Nog and Rory join the rest of you. Henry! Yes. Are you taking anybody from your um, coterie, your, your, your men in question? No, I will look to Baudry. Yes, mm-hmm. Baudry. Squire Baudry. Baudry, if I do not return, do not trust the commander. Um, you will notice Henry. Um, Baudry kind of uh, just just nods his head. He he looks a little taller, Henry, as you kind of see him in the light. A little more muscled. Yes, puberty. Yeah. As he very stoically kind of nods his head and um, begins to ready the men to prepare themselves if they are needed. Wolfram, do you, you have men at your disposal now. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a small you, uh, company. You have a small company <laughs> of men. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't say small. You were, you're completely in charge of the entire handgunner regiment of the expedition. So, is there anybody you would like to take with you, or are you a self-made man? Okay, am I am I the captain then, and I've got sergeants in charge of the uh, different you, uh, squads? You are the captain. Okay, I think I have to be the next level to get a rank actually. But still, um, I will. Um, are there some uh, some troopers or sergeants who have caught my eye as uh, trustful and? Skilled. Um, that you think are trustworthy and skilled, Wolfram? Yeah, it's going to be from, up my from your, your sense great. of judgment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what? what they... Let's uh, let's leave this down to chance, Wolfram. Oh, uh, this way. <laughs> why, why not? Why? Right. How? How about? Um. Why don't you give me a intuition test, Wolfram? Uh, I'm actually a, one of the few things I'm pretty good at. Let me see okay. here. All right. Well, I got a 50% chance. Oh, I know how to pick them. Um, you said, what What was the... Uh... 52 was my goal. Yeah, except for your yeah, fatigue. I just got a 44. You're fatigued. Wait, what? You're fa- you have a fatigue condition, so you oh, are at a four. Right. Well, that's a critical fail, then. I mean, oh, use, I guess use, so. use, use the thing to make it pass. You can make a fortune point to oh, make yeah. it Let a me do that. success. Use point now, it, success. it won't be a critical success, but it'll make it a success because it adds a success level. Right. Thank you, Henry. All right. Um, well, from you think that there's there's probably two or three, you know gentlemen that you've gambled I don't with want more than four so two or three is fine two or three two or three gentlemen that you, you think they could they know how to lose they, they could keep quiet if necessary um, if all else you could threaten them with the, the worst duties they could have and they, they definitely fall in line I've shot people in the face before okay and now I did I'm, I'm not worried about keeping them in line yeah uh, yeah there's a uh, two or three no more than four of uh, guys that I 
I feel okay. are trustworthy. I'm not going to just bleed out out there. So I'm going to grab them. <laughs> Recruit them for a special mission to, to support for the... a, uh, a special the, mission. Hmm? Okay. All right. Let me do this. All right. In that case... Um, you are looking at taking Conrad Foss. Hold on. Who's a gentleman with a very crooked nose, as if he's been into quite a few uh, fights in his time. And has a uh, almost like a like a cleft uh, like palate. He he he's not a very pleasant man to, to look at. Um, pockmarked, greasy, doesn't look uh, extremely trustworthy. But someone Wolfram would put faith in for sure. And then you have a um, uh, Volkmar Rosenhang. No, oh, excuse me. Rossenheim. <laughs> so German. Uh, who is a... Um, who is someone of similar station as yourself, also from Ostland. And is known to have a, uh, a bit of a, a streak with the ladies, despite his more advanced years and age. And by advanced, I mean he's probably in his 40s. Oh, he's a walking corpse. <laughs> but he is a hell of a hand gunner. And then last but not least, you have Norbert Scheffler. Who looks rat-like in appearance. Oh, I like him already. <laughs> and might be why Wolf I, what's his last name? trusts Sh- him. Scheffler. Norbert Scheffler. Okay. Excellent squad to back me up. All right. You prepare the these three handgunners. They bring their their kit with them. Um, uh, uh, Rossenheim, uh, Volkmar, uh, is the first to speak up. I, uh, Captain, is this, uh, uh what, what the hell are we doing? Uh, is this like a special assignment or something? It's a special assignment. Apparently, uh, Henry told me that some kind of threat that has been approaching at night that we need to investigate it. Uh, he said that uh, apparently he's uh, guarding a uh, quite a large chest of gold, so uh, I felt it would be proper if, if my best men came with me to uh, to see what we can uh, retrieve. Exactly. That sounds like a good eye. A great idea, sir. We would definitely keep good track of it for sure. And you Yes. That sounds like a great idea. Oh, that's Norbert, right? Norbert? That is. Yes. We can't. You know me, boss. Trustworthy as they come. As he None begins better. to as he begins to take out his small knife and just kind of like pick into his like teeth that kind of jut out at a strange angle. Yes, yes, excellent job. Conrad got anything to say, bro? Conrad, Conrad just kind of like nods his head. Um, he's distracted, Wolfram. As you're looking at him, he is staring at one of the sleeping harem guard nearby, whose tent flap is open, and he's just like focused in, a little too focused. Conrad, do you know what a eunuch is? Because if you keep staring, you're about to find out. <gasps> Be careful, my brother. <laughs> It'd be worth the risk, sir. I'll give him a good hearty slap on the back. I like your style. Mm. 
Come on now. Let's meet. Let's go with the others. Hurry, hurry. They all gather. Um, Wolfram shows up to your secret meeting with three. What look like worst <laughs> humans on the planet. <laughs> three, three dredges of some <laughs> far corner of a bar that he showed up with, each having large handguns on their person, led by the mighty Wolfram um, as he walks up. All right, Lucy and Henry, are you, are you? Oh, there's not. Are, are we ready? Uh, I've Conrad, got some backup just in case it gets hot. Yeah, Conrad just is staring uncomfortably at uh, Johanna as she is standing next to Lucien. She leans over to your uh, close to you, Lucien, and says. If uh, that man approaches me, I will cut off his uh, business. I will vouch for you 100%. What up with Johnson? Good, sir. <laughs> I appreciate uh, you. At this point, I will I'll take out my uh, skin with, with five swigs of Bugman, Bugman's mm-hmm. left, and I'll, I'll raise it to the party and take a swig yeah. and hand one to mm-hmm. Joanna. Mm-hmm. To get to get rid of our our so to, to fatigue, swing along, get rid of your fatigue oh, conditions. Man, I wish I'd taken a swing before I picked my guys. Um, <laughs> I just didn't think about that. They'd be like quality guys. This is a critical thing. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do the same. Take a swig of. I'm gonna do, I guess we they're have They're trustworthy left. for you, Wolfram. Come on. No, they're not, man. These guys are just shooting in the back for <laughs> chance. You serious? Come on. I don't. I don't plan to come back with them. I'll just say that. Mm, okay. Don't tell them that. But yeah, I'll take a swig too of um, my remaining. All right. Four or five swigs. Y'all so take. A, my y'all take a swig. As you take a swig, Wolfram, um, you hear a <clears throat> from behind you as the three gentlemen you brought with you also uh, with like a like like a taste. Are we still in the? Uh, are we still don't in the hold camp out or... on us, boss. <laughs> Are we still in the camp? No, you're outside to, the oh. camp. You guys are outside the camp at this point. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, Rory, my, my men here are a little parched. Perhaps you have a little, uh, little, <laughs> little pick me up to, to quench their thirst. Of course, sir. I've got just the stuff brewed it up for Master Nog this morning. All right. Be you got for him, Rory. You hear, you hear the you're in for a treat, boys. You hear these conco- the 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 warring of his like his his like duffel concoctions that he's he's like <laughs> pumping himself up with, <laughs> and there's just like a bubbling noise, um, as uh, in short order there is this foul smelling grog liquid that he 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 kind of like pours into these makeshift mugs and he kind of hands them out to the the three handgunners who at first are like oh and then you watch as um as uh Volkmar is the first one to I want to turn down a drink <laughs> and then just kind of guzzles it back <laughs> followed followed by the uh, the very um, creepily eyed Conrad and then the dastardly Norbert each of them mightily failing their I have three uh, drunk handgunners now failing their consume alcohol tests <laughs> Oh. oh, that was, that was some good shit, sir. Good shit, indeed. <laughs> we need to stand by this guy. All right, just as long as you guys are. Why don't you get over to the side so none of your don't guns you worry, are pointed sir, at any of us? He pulls his handgun out. I got the eyes in the back of my head, sir. I take him from a thousand yards. Just kind of like waving his gun around, like a, a drunken redneck. I let a hand rest on one of my pistols just in case I have to do a fast shot. <laughs> you kind of eye them down, Wolfram. And uh, you guys begin to move out on your secretive investigation. All right. Are we taking horses? 
Uh, yeah. Nog <sighs> is as fast as a horse, so you don't have to worry about yeah. him. Um, <laughs> so, strangely enough, he moves as fast as one. So, um, three horses have to be given to your handgunners, Wolfram. Uh, mm. Johanna has her own horse, uh, being Lu- uh, Sir Lucien's second. But as the mounts are procured, everyone mounts up and begins to ride out. Um, I'm assuming you guys want to do this with stealth. So it's not to be spotted by Yeah, I'm sure the... my drunken guy's going to be really stealthy now. Thank you. So it's not to be spotted by the roving Let's put him down. <laughs> I'm going to put him down. Um, oops. So... I like a stealth roll from each of you. Oh, boy. And I will make one for our NPCs. Let's start with Johanna. Not bad. Mm. Okay, okay. Oh, my God, I barely made it. Critical success for Lucien. Yeah. <laughs> If, if Rory gives me my, my you know my usual bonus, then, then it's a one. I, I passed by one number. Yeah, he gives you a success level. Nice. Um, so, so if I you just succeed. had if yeah if you just had a failure, then you you get just a success. Yes. Nice. Um, Wolfram's men. <laughs> Holy shit! Um, it appears that success, big success. That Conrad uh, is Conrad, the creepy Conrad, is beyond oh, sneaky. Um, uh-huh. Even in his drunken state, uh, he is very good at making himself uh, hidden. I don't know. I'm why. concerned he has to stay at house. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I just gotta get in my company, man. Uh, however. Um, your elderly uh, Volkmar is uh, piss drunk, and every once in a while he lets out a a very raucous fart removes from his body, uncontrollable flatulence, just <laughs> squeaking, and it's very drawn out. There might be some wetness at the end of it. Yes. And finally, uh, Norbert. Norbert's on the cusp. He just fails. But just not not by much. Um, he's just kind of he's he's probably just not himself right now, Wolfram. But um, as far as failures are concerned, uh, Henry, I'm assuming the 55 is a critical fail for you. I if spin a if I spin a thing, it's just it's just a pass. Okay. All right. Yeah. Just make it a pass. That's fair. All right. Uh, and then Wolfram, is the 56 a pass for you? Oh, yeah. Uh, by yeah. one. Uh, it's 57. And thank yeah. goodness I drank some yeah. Um, I got a quick question. Does there happen to be like a ravine or a cliff or anything where I can... <laughs> I want to make sure I have some of my guys right at the ravine so they can look down in case anybody's going to try and shoot at us or throw a rock or they fall down it just, so, just to make sure so to put this in perspective you guys are moving down a a pass in between like a break in between the mountain range um you're you are in the ravine essentially so okay. there are there are mountain walls on each side of the the large pass we're, we're talking about it's probably like i don't know what probably like Two, three thousand feet wide. Uh, it's it, it's big enough that where you guys can easily move your caravan and all these other things down here, no problem. There are hills and small breaks and large rocks and whatnot that kind of decorate the landscape around you. So there is some level of cover. It isn't just flat dunes like it will be out in the desert, maybe. Um, so there is places to to seek shelter and whatnot. Uh. The stealth roll it was more for you guys escaping the eyes of the patrolling knights that uh, are patrolling the encampment. Which 
as you guys gather and begin to move out in the direction that Wolfram saw. Now, some time has passed since they left. Um, quite a bit of time, in fact. Probably a couple hours at this point. But as you begin to move out, you notice that the patrol is making its rounds around the encampment and is actually approaching the location you guys are coming for. And right when it's almost at that pivotal point, you hear the squeaking wet fart of Volkmar. Loud. <laughs> and <laughs> all of you stop. All of you kind of stop as Wolfram draws a pistol and points it at the back of the man's head. <laughs> as the uh, the knights kind of like stop what they're doing like you you can see from the torchlight they're carrying that they that they stop for a moment and just listen and everyone is quiet and after a few moments they begin to resume their march circling the encampment and you guys have made it away from the initial encampment not by much though not by much i'm gonna lean over to nog and very quietly ask him hey nog can you snap a neck in just one one movement like that i, I, I reckon i could it wouldn't be too much no uh, stay close problem. to my hand guys <laughs> Keep an eye on them, you say. Just you snatch them up if you need me to, yeah? Uh, if I hear another wet fart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it may be compromising the integrity of the group and whatnot. Well, I, I will say that I, I believe the older gentleman is um, experiencing uh, a bowel troubles after the recent imbibing that you... Um, uh, asked me to give to him. I must say, I'm not used to cooking for you wee humans no more. I mostly just feature the biggins, like my man here, Mr. Nog. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't blame this on me, good sir. Not indeed. No, 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 no. Uh, Trooper Ro Roisenheim, I, uh, I think the best place for you would be to uh, be on the flank. I want to make sure that with you over there, you keep an eye out that no one tries to uh, pull the wheel maneuver and hits us in the flank. So, oh, I don't know, about 40 feet. Should be fine. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'll let you know when mm. I need you back. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, of course, sir. Mm. As the horse kind of like moseys over away from the rest of the group. <laughs> he had a critical failure on his stealth roll. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. He's not. He's not. Uh, he's not doing so hot. Well, oh, I'm sorry. All right. As you begin to move forward. I need somebody to track. So I need a perception test for tracking. Perception. Eight. That's definitely going to be um, Wolfram. Is that Wolfram? That's Wolfram. I'm like four points than anybody else. All right. A 20. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Red. I don't believe that's a, uh, a crit, but that's uh, five no, levels. Five levels of success. That's that's yeah. pretty damn good. I can you... see and I can shoot and I can sneak. All right, well, from you kind of leading the pack, you do pick out the tracks easy enough. Um, while you're not you're not like in like grainy sand, you are still in. Um, there is some some impressions made in uh, in the like landscape. Loose dirt. You loose dirt. You're able to pick up and very easily able to uh, follow the tracks. Now, you guys, I'm assuming you aren't using torches, at least when you were getting out of the encampment. Now that you are out away from the camp, are you guys going to be using light? Or are you um, just relying are, on... Do we have any hooded lanterns? Yeah, oh yeah, you do. Yeah, that's probably the best. It's hooded okay. lanterns. So very low light. Wolfram? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you have one for sure, Wolfram. They can easily have been been gotten for the rest of the crew. Uh, one of the many uh, nice things about being in the expedition is you're very well outfitted from your time in Lashik. So, putting on very low amounts of light, just enough to see a few feet in front of you to make sure you don't have any accidents. 
Um, I'm assuming since you're using low light, you want to move at a slower pace. Steady, quiet. Correct? Okay. I assume. Um... All right. With that in mind, you travel and you track easily um, staying behind this smaller group uh, with five levels of success Wolfram you will, you can you do notice that there are specifically six horses and you can pick them out easy as are can they be. side by side or do they ride in the file to hide their numbers it looks like they were riding in a, a way to try to disguise how many uh, people were traveling Okay. But with that many levels of, okay. of success, you can easily pick it out. So, with that in mind, you travel. Through I'm going to point that out to Lucian, too. Like, uh, just like make sure that Lucian and. Uh, that's funny. Uh, just make sure that Lucian and Henry know that, too, that it looks like uh, my, my suspicion, and I, my suspicion is correct, that it's, it's just six. You travel through most of the night. And you haven't caught up. And then it's getting you're getting to that tipping point. Where if you guys don't make camp or go back to camp, you're potentially risking exhaustion. As you're going on the points of lack of lack of sleep at this point. Do you wish to press further? Shouldn't we probably take some rest? Push on. We're pushing on ahead of everyone. All right. You keep gentlemen, pushing. Gentlemen, I, uh, I, I understand the, the haste, but um, if we were to get in combat, it might be better if uh, these guys were a little sobered up. I don't know if it's possible for us to just. I will follow your orders, Henry, but uh, just, just, just some. Information there. So close, we can't quit. We're so close. Right, let's do it then. Okay. All right. In that case, I need everyone to make me an endurance check. Uh -oh. Risk exhaustion. Oh my God. from critical success. You know I had to get like a 28. Well, I have I've had, I've had one level. level of success. Okay. All you need is a level of success. That's for me as well. Get will uh, combat as soon as possible. Johanna gets a degree of fatigue. One point of exhaustion to her. Each of the handgunners also get another point of fatigue. And they're already intoxicated too? And they're intoxicated. Although after riding for six to eight hours, it's starting to wear off. So they, they're just, they just have fatigue at this point. You begin to press ever onward, Wolfram and company. Not resting. Um, I'm assuming you guys probably packed some kind of food, at least for a day's travel. Yes, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hard tack. Yeah. You kind of eat on the move. Um, you don't spot the nights all through the night and into the night until the sun is beginning to rise. It's at this point, Wolfram, looking out, you see very far ahead of you you see the glimmer of sunlight on armor it looks like probably four or five hours ahead of you is the group of knights immediately pointed out to uh, Henry and Lucy and uh, mm -hmm. I was like, like that's that's metal that is, that's metal shining in the sun 
And I can tell, would I be able to see even just like a blob moving slightly? Yes, you can tell okay. that, yeah, it, like that's got to be them for sure. And if you can see them, they might be able they to see, see you. you. Where's the sun in relation to That's what I'm thinking. us and them? The sun's just beginning to come up, and the sun um, rises in front of them. It, it rises from the normal east-west. So, you guys are moving east. So, we're okay. looking at the sun. You're looking into the sun towards them, yes. So, they would be silhouetted. We would be illuminated. Mm-hmm. Um, How much armor, how much metal are we wearing, Henry? Henry has the most, for sure. Each okay, of your handgunners so. also, yeah. you guys have guns. Um, even class, be, I mean, you can kind of put like like uh, things over them. Henry's the only one with like the most like visible armor. Although for a stealth mission, I'm assuming he probably put some kind of like cloth or something over himself to mm-hmm. minimize it as much as he can. Is this yeah. just like a, like a, what do they call it? Uh, just a, pl- a flat plane, like a like a pan. I no, it is not. It. No, not not yet. You're not to that point. Now, it, you as you're looking out, you can see the edge of the um, of the mountain range. Like you guys are almost out into the desert. And it looks like these knights are like right there at the cusp of passing into the the great desert, the sands. Out in the sands, it is rolling dunes like the like the Sahara. Arrakis. Um, I'm gonna look at uh, Henry and uh, Lucy and kind of bring Nog on the conversation. Where, where are they going? Clearly, they do not plan to be back with the uh, the expedition anytime soon. I mean, wait, was I able to tell where they were going away or coming forward? No. It, uh, you can tell that they're they're moving they're moving away. They haven't stopped. Right. They haven't stopped since the previous. Yeah, otherwise, night. we would have caught them. Yeah, you would have caught them yeah. at some point. Yeah, that's right. So, um, I mean, I, they're not quite a. I mean, four four or five hours away, my my friends, and uh, they're just going to go out to, in the open desert. Are we going to continue to follow them, or are we going to go back? I, I looked. I looked at your guidance on this. Your leadership, Henry. We might have to go back before they end up doubling back on us, and we find ourselves stranded in the desert. Are we uh, making a uh, tactical withdrawal, sir, Lucien? I don't think we'll be prepared we, for this long of a journey. So we would either have to uh, class uh, double time or fall back. We could. Uh, I'm not even sure what we will find once we overtake them. So we were the uh, hunting uh, Night Panther, eh? Huh? Yes. We do not know for sure, but we suspect that some of the commotions, disturbances in the night, stem from a small contingent of the higher ranks. That is uh, very concerning, sir. Yes. We needed to know for sure. Perhaps we take this time to faint, pull back, and prepare for a repost. Is that maybe a wise course of action? Can we see any place that might be, like, somewhat hidden where we could post you up? Get, you guys could stop and, um, and take rest for sure. Hell, you could even just wait for the expedition to come rolling by um, if you like. Cover? 
Uh, yeah, there is plenty of places for you to take cover if necessary. Is there shadow? Are we still in the ravine enough where we can get in shadow? Yes, for sure. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> so, making this may be the best course of action, but say they do perform whatever wicked deeds we suspect them of way far away from prying eyes and since they ride back to the, ca- to the caravan we will have caught them doing nothing more than riding out in front of the party second so claims they were scouting or on patrol unless they they choose in their own insecurity to provoke us. I don't know. Uh, Henri, what, uh, what is your opinion here? If we can find a place to wait. Maybe we just wait here for the caravan to show up now. I think it's safe to say they busted us on this one. Do you think they were cognizant of us? Do you, uh, Possibly. Do you guys know how a, a mother bird, when it breaks its wing, will often, or it will fake a, that it's broke its wing to lure a predator away from its nest? Because I'm concerned that, that this is what happened, that we were lured out. Either to expose us, perhaps there's other eyes we don't know, uh, viewing us to see uh, what we've been up to. Or perhaps even more nefarious uh, ideas of. I definitely think we've been had. The caravan's gonna know that we're gone by now, so you know, when we do catch up with them, we'll have to have a reason for this. Well. I believe you know, more, more than enough justification for us to uh, have a reason to conduct independent reconnaissance. Well, also, but uh, I happen to see uh, those three sleeping drunken handgunners over there. Uh, I thought we chased them out because of desertion. We had to go uh, apprehend them and uh, serve them the law. You use what artifice you like. If you need to discipline your handgunners, you do it yourself. We have more than enough sober and sane reason to be to have been out. Apart from breaking wind, Wolfram, your handgunners have done nothing of detriment to us. Uh, that's true. I'm just bloodthirsty. As Wolfram contemplates Execution. S- executing <laughs> his hand, his men for, for some kind of elaborate cover up. As he stares at them, each of them grow whiskers and form these rat like heads. Ooh. As his strange <laughs> visions Smoke overtake him for a moment, he's just like. Ah. As all of you begin to take cover, take rest. It's at this point a few hours pass and you hear the expedition before you even see them coming. Specifically, you see the column of knights marching. Are you guys trying to keep yourself hidden or are you letting yourself be known to the knights as they will pass before the actual um, caravan does? The knights who are still with the, the convoy? Yes. Not the ones that we've been chasing. Not, not the ones that you were pursuing, no. I say we let ourselves be exposed. Okay. Okay, not that high. Uh, a small group detaches itself and runs ahead. Noticing um, Henry, for sure, he's the most... In Nog, Nog is the easiest one to spot um, by a long shot. And the most recognizable from a distance. They, uh, what looked like was possibly a, um, a scouting move to see 
what kind of individuals might be camping in the nearby ravine turns into a uh, a more open stroll towards all of you um, getting off of his horse Henry is a man you met um, not too long ago uh, known as Theobald he was the knight that fetched you previously to go see the uh, the commander, Helwig. Theobald approaches you, Henry, um, on still mounted. Master Henry, they've been looking for you and your party. It appears that you disappeared last night. What exactly were you up to? <clears throat> Advanced scouting. Hmm. Thought you were told not to do that, sir. You and your rabble. That's well. I get bored. Well, while you were off scouting, the caravans had a big head of a hip cup. I believe the, um, what's his name? The old Nine Lives wants to talk to you personally. Very well. And he very smugly turns his horse and marches back towards the column. I say nothing else to him. I don't report to him. The knights pass you by. Lord uh, Commander Helwig. You see his kind of elaborate headdress just staring at the lot of you as he passes by. Almost staring daggers into Henry. Mm -hmm. As they keep on moving. The actual caravan of the expedition uh, comes in sh very shortly behind them. With a runner from the uh, from your own contingent of knights, Henry, coming up to you, urging you to quickly return it with him to uh, Nazaro. All of you are led back into the camp um, as it is still moving. Henry, you pull up next to uh, Nazaro himself, with the rest of you kind of like falling in shortly behind him. He says, uh, Nazaro says, uh, Henry, um, I've been talking to, uh, to. Well, I have not had the opportunity to find Luther. I have no idea where he's gone. Everything is going to shit. I do not know what has happened. Um, uh, have you had any of the... Uh, any of the provisions? Just uh, the rations and tack we took with us. Let me see yours. He holds out a hand. Show what I have you, left. You pull out one of your one of your like hard pieces of tack. Strange. Let me show you mine. He reaches into his bag. As he pulls out his hand, you watch as his provisions turn to dust in his hand and fall to nothingness and to the ground. This is what uh, all the provisions are like in the camp. And that is where we will take our first break.